And when I first started out, I started seeing a lot of neuromuscular patients with pain problems. But when you go to the textbooks, historically speaking, there was no mention of pain. In fact, most of the disorders, uh, including Charcot-Marie Tooth, which is hereditary neuropathy, um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, uh, most forms of muscular dystrophy, these conditions were described as painless. And that was just not adding up in my clinical experience. And it turns out, as I suspected, that these people have a lot of problems with pain. Not surprisingly, the neuropathies, like Charcot-Marie Tooth disease, they have typical neuropathic pain, burning, uh, dysesthetic pain in their arms and legs. And then folks with uh, unfortunate diseases like ALS, they have pain from immobility, uh, coupled with spasticity, um, probably depression, um, and very similar in advanced cases of muscular dystrophy too, where they may be uh, dependent on a wheelchair for mobility, um, they have loss of range of motion in their joints, joint contractures, they may have scoliosis, um, pressure points on their skin, so of course they have a lot of pain. Well, being a rehabilitation physician, I always make sure that they're in an appropriate uh, range of motion program, active assisted range of motion, and to a certain extent, passive range of motion. Sometimes you have to be careful with passive range of motion because you could damage the joint. So active assisted, where the patient is actually uh, co-facilitating the movement, is a little safer. <clears throat> Um, and then you can use physical modalities like ultrasonic heat over a joint, uh, one to two watts of uh, ultrasonic energy gives a good deep heat, uh, which will decrease the viscosity of the joint fluid and also bring in more blood, increased blood flow. And then medications, certainly anti-inflammatory medications like the COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitors. Um, Tylenol also has some efficacy. And then uh, after that, maybe a mild opiate, something like tramadol. Um, and then uh, if there's neuropathic pain, I would certainly bring in anti-epileptic medications like pregabalin or gabapentin and uh, either a tricyclic antidepressant or some of the newer SNRIs like uh, the Cymbalta or Effexor. Um, and then of course, I also do recommend cannabis in that setting as well. I think that a, a primary care physician either is going to treat pain or not treat pain. <clears throat> uh, you can't do it halfway. And if you're going to treat pain, that means you're going to have to use opiates and you have to bring yourself up to speed with education. And that goes back to you know using a opiate risk tool, risk assessment, things of that nature, and being comfortable with patient contracts. Um, so if a primary care practitioner is not going to treat pain, then if somebody has chronic pain, pain lasting more than three months, that right there should probably generate a referral. If they're comfortable with that, uh, with treating chronic pain, then, then they can uh, maybe not do a referral until the patient is refractory, like maybe they've already tried a long-acting opiate and maybe some breakthrough opiate, but the patient is still not getting satisfactory relief or they're asking for increasing doses of opiate. But I, I really recommend to primary care doctors that they make a decision whether they're going to do it or not. And if they're going to do it, then they really should educate themselves and take continuing medical education and pain management. I think it's very doable if they do that.